Please. Do I hear? Okay. All right, it is 8 o'clock. Good evening, lunatics. It is Friday, April 19th. Here he comes. The man of the hour has arrived. We are live, by the way, in Hurricane, West Virginia. We've got a new driver orientation this weekend. So Larry's in town in the flesh. He's right there in front of you. Look at him. Right there he is. Peace, love, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I've 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 had a, I'm in an abusive relationship with a couple of freightliners. Um, so I'm working to do everything I can to increase my blood alcohol content as we pro proceed through this podcast because it's Friday night and I've had enough of these damn trucks. So <clears throat> we will we have some announcements to make. We have um, we have some good news to talk about. Um, we'll catch you up on everything that's been happening, um, on the, uh, on the fleet and all that good stuff. I have a little coming down here is <clears throat> always a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a technological challenge as you guys, uh, <laughs> like that's something different. Yeah. I'm trying to get the live up. I got like four computers here in front of me. So no audio on TikTok. How's that possible? <clears throat> well, hang on a minute. I can't get us on TikTok either, by the way. Well, we're on TikTok. I, hang we on are? a second. I got to get this stupid. <sighs> I'm having to run. I'm getting this flashing thing on TikTok. It's looking for a comment or something. <clears throat> Well, I'm having to run – Windows is stupid. I hate Windows with a passion. Um, and I don't think it will let me – let's see if that does anything for us. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, we might have something. There we go. All right, let me crank this up a little bit. Y'all let me know how the audio is coming through. If it's too loud or too soft, I can make some adjustments. Um, so, okay. Sorry about that, guys. We're good on TikTok now. I, my, I, have a, I have a machine at home that I run TikTok on, but somehow it got turned off, so I'm now I'm, I'm having to do a workaround. And, and, uh, <clears throat> Would you come down here and get my TikTok working? Um. Hand me, give me his phone. Is that what you're trying to do? No, it's on my iPad. All right, give me the iPad and I'll get it working. Well, it's plugged up. And... <clears throat> Just open his app and go to the search bar and search Blue Ribbon, and you should be able to see at the top there. Show him what, what you got. Anyway, well, let's go ahead and stop, uh, start talking about the shop <clears throat> because in the room, huh? There you go. All right, there you go. Now he can see TikTok. So let's talk about the Blue Ribbon Shop. It's going to be <clears throat> at Cam's Service Center, 2209 6th Avenue, Charleston, West Virginia, 25387. Um, in the room right now, we have the man who is going to be uh, our EM, MD Alignment Certified Technician, Kyle DeGroot. He's here for his orientation this weekend. He's going to be a driver and an MD guy, so he's kind of going to be doing both things. Um, the shop's grand opening will be June 10th. That's a Monday, um, and I'm sure we're going to have lots of festivities and and things of that nature. So um, I was talking to one of the guys at the Detroit shop today, and he was very glad to hear that we were going to be doing alignments because there are a couple of providers in the area 
but they always tell them we'll get to you in two weeks. So I think we're going to have an opportunity to pick up a lot of business from people that need suspension and alignment work. Um, and, and people are not, you know, we're not going to be able to, we're not going to have to tell them we'll see you in two weeks, bring it on over and we'll have a look. Um, so that's exciting. Um, that's coming down the pipe. I've been working in the shop all week, um, chasing dem demons and gremlins on a couple of trucks. And I think, <clears throat> Knock on let's kind let's kind of let's kind of talk about the relationship we have with Chris and Margie. Okay, mm -hmm. so we have been using the shop here in Charleston for a couple of years now. It's called Cam's Truck and Trailer. It's Chris and Margie Dolan. Cam's Service Center. Cam's Service Center. Service Center. All right. Yep. So when they decided to expand, um, we've been doing our own work there. Chris has been for several months now. <clears throat> so we kind of had a de facto shop inside of cams. And then we decided that we were going to formalize this when they decided to expand and add another building to their operation. We agreed to lease some of the space from that new building. And so we're going to have a bay basically within cams service center. And that bay is going to be our MD alignment. Um, location and as um we have the time we're also going to do other things specialties in that bay um these are force cleaning uh dpf alternatives um removal and installation work um yeah there's a there's a dpf alternatives location here that already comes to cams and i had a talk with him and he was happy to hear that we would be offering diesel force cleaning because a lot of times people will come in and cams will take the filters out because DPF, they don't actually do any of the, the wrench turning, <clears throat> but you can take your one box and your filters and stuff to them. So it's going to be a nice compliment, their business and our business. Um, that's going to be nice. Right. Uh, do we, do we want to announce the other thing that's happening with uh -huh. inspections? Yeah, we can. Um, we are going to be, uh, I think after May 20th, I think we're going to be qualified. Now, it's not us because since we're at Landstar, we're not eligible. But CAMS, <clears throat> and in particular, Chris Dolan, is going to be a qualified Landstar inspection mm -hmm. inspector. And his shop, CAMS, is going to be available for you guys to do 120 inspections here at CAMS. Yep. Uh, again, we can't be involved with that because there's a conflict of interest with us being BCOs. But you can come here and uh, and get the work done. The good thing about it is that if work needs to be done, uh, since we are a full service shop there, you don't have to tow the vehicle out to mm -hmm. get the work done. And we are allowed to, if, if some of the work involves what we do, we are allowed to do the work. We just can't do the inspection. Right. So if you end up needing a bushing or a wheel seal or something like that, and that's something that we do and cams is not able to get to it, we can do the work. We just can't do the inspection itself. Um, so that's, that's going to be, and also we are going to be a federal DOT inspection shop uh, besides being Landstar. So if you just need a regular federal inspection, uh, we can do that as well as uh, cams. Mm -hmm. um, Chris will be a qualified federal DOT inspector. You know, I, I've, <clears throat> I've obviously been behind the curtain now for a year or more. Uh, they're working with cams, but just as a consumer, right. Of, of truck shop, uh, service, uh, over the last, you know, year or so with them, what has impressed me the most about this shop is their 24, seven, 365, right. Um, they, they unless we don't have parts, which y'all know how that goes, right? Trying to, I've had, I have been told uh, for the last about five yesterdays that a cam, uh, a camshaft and some rocker assemblies would be coming tomorrow, uh, and it still ain't here. Okay, so aside from that, uh, but I do know for a fact as I was on my way home last night at ten o'clock, and Chris was out on a road call or a, not a road call, he was on a test drive this uh, Kenworth that has an automatic and it, and it, it broke down basically. And so uh, they were, they were working on that truck at <coughs> one o'clock this morning and Herbie found a broken wire finally. 
uh, that was causing the issue. Uh, but they don't, they don't lock the doors at five o'clock. You know, that has been so frustrating for me over the years going into a shop and have them be like, oh, yeah, well, it's five o'clock. Uh, there's one more bolt to turn. And if we worked another 15 minutes, your truck would be done, but we're going to go home. Um, so that's one thing that I really love about cams is um, they're going to work on the truck until it's done. You know, we're going to work until we can't work anymore unless we're limited by parts or something like that. Let me let me address parts for a second. We, uh, of course, I have a long, long history in the parts business, second generation, actually. And Chris and I are pretty um, adept at finding parts we don't rely on the parts guys to do it because all we hear from those guys are uh, it's on national back order that's their standard answer uh we find we have got it located and on the way within 15 minutes of hearing that noise from the parts guys so um i think you'll find that we won't have the typical response that you've been getting down the road about parts i mean parts are parts we're in the logistics business okay right so we can, you know, now obviously we can't can do things out of our control, but the typical bullshit that we hear that parts guys tell us uh, to cover up their laziness, you're not going to get that here, okay? Uh, we have been a customer of shitty service for so long that we're doing this to prove to ourselves and to everybody else in the industry that you can run a shop and run it correctly. Mm -hmm. and uh and still make money and still please the customer um you know we're going to we're going to be the lunatic shop um and, and we're working on having a parts inventory you know in the building um we have a pretty good inventory right now yeah and that's and that's the big thing you know cuz you you do this enough and you know that there's there's certain brake shoes and drums and filters and gaskets and hoses um, you know, Chris has done it enough. I've seen him like there's, I can't think of what it is, but there's something on a Volvo, um, <laughs> has something to do with fuel. I think panic button. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but there's something on a Volvo, right. And he knows that somebody's going to call and it's this little thing and it's got these little tiny screws and you have to be super patient with it, but he knows he needs to have two or three of those on the shelf because they're going to call. That Volvo is going to come in. And so you learn over time, like, okay, well, the Peterbilt has this problem and the Kenworth has that problem. And the Freightliner had like Freightliner. It's all CPCs. And, uh, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the fact when these OEMs call us to get a part from us, I can't wait to, I can't wait to price that ticket out. <laughs> <clears throat> all the charges that we're going to put on there, you know? Well, I will say, that as far as parts go, we have we have a we have a Freightliner dealer here close by that has three locations within seventy miles, and we have a Detroit shop, and we have a Peterbilt dealer, and we have a Kenworth Volvo dealer, um, and they're pretty good, especially the Freightliner and the Detroit. They their prices like one of our guys who was it the other day, Evan had a boost sensor. For a for a D Deck Five Detroit, and it was like I want to say one hundred and thirty dollars sounds right, one hundred thirty bucks. I bought that boost sensor for Richie's truck, sixty nine dollars. Their prices have always been really really good, um, and they of course the the PDC is an Indy, so we can just about within reason get anything for a Freightliner next day as long as we order it by about 2 30 in the afternoon so we have a good network for parts here there's a huge napa warehouse not 15 minutes away so um i've seen these guys hustle around uh and be able to find what we need but a lot of times it's what i see and, and larry's seen it it's not that you can't walk back in your place and find it it's you don't have the ability or the desire to do the cross check, to do the cross referencing, to find out, well, maybe, maybe somebody has it in a different brand. Um, we're getting set up to be an auto man, uh, or I guess we are set up to be an auto man distributor. Um, and good God, they make every damn thing. Um, so 
when you need some of that weird stuff like S cam bushings, uh, or you need the, the air governor or a compressor or an alternate, like what, what, have, what has blown me away over the years, how do you not have like five different variations of a starter? The, the, guys, there's only so many starters that damn trucks use, right? Um, and we try our best to have not only them on the shelf, but trying to get the old boy across the river to do rebuilds because, you know, we can offer a service there um, if we can get the guy to get them out of the floor and actually rebuild them. Um, so there's so much. What's crazy about West Virginia, there's so much here. Um but it's it's the management, it's it's the moving the parts around and 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 knowing who to call and when to call, um, and it's been funny to me since since Cam's has moved into the new location, uh, Freightliner has bought us lunch twice. Uh, Peterbilt brought us lunch one day, um, so they're I mean they're they're trying to get the 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 business. Um, I just wish they realized that we would give them a business if they would just give us the damn parts that we need. We got a question on YouTube here right quick. Let me hit this one. Mm -hmm. What is a DPF alternative? <laughs> That's a good question. Well, a DPF mm -hmm. alternative is a business. It's called DPF alternatives. Um, there's a, it's a franchise deal. Um, the one here is run by a guy named Chase Bryant. He's in Barbersville. I think they're moving to Ona, O-N-A, uh, Ona, West Virginia, right ever close to Ona Speedway. Um, and basically what they do is a cleaning process to clean your DPF. What, what we have done essentially from between over 20 years, it's literally taken two decades from 2004 when EGR was introduced to 2008 when DPF was introduced in 2000, no, that's wrong. 2007 Same. DPF. And in 2010 was SCR, the, the deaf fluid. Mm -hmm. What we've gotten to now is that we can actually work on these things. And as I have experienced a nightmare over the last seven days, the advantage that you do have, okay, of running the newer trucks is that there are systems and sensors after combustion <coughs> that you can gain data from to tell you what that engine is doing. The, the bridge which was EGR starting in 04, 04 to 07. Um, there's nothing after combustion. Every input for that D deck five, uh, that ACERT cat, um, is based off of intake. Okay. Well, it could see everything that it wants to see and it puts out an output. And if there's some kind of problem, it has no idea. It doesn't throw a code. It, there's nothing you can check. It's just a guess. Um, well, I guess I'll try a turbo. I'll, tr I'll guess I'll try a V-pod. I guess I'll try a boost sensor. And you literally just have to throw parts at them, which was the big frustration that everybody had back in the day. And so the solution was just delete it. Well, deleting is no longer a viable option. And y'all have no idea how close Richie's truck was to getting deleted this week. Deleted mm -hmm. and, and, and or burned to the ground into a pile of ashes. I, it was, it was, it was delete it or burn it to the ground, collect the insurance money. I just, I just was back and forth. You can't say that publicly. What well, burn it to the ground yeah. or delete it? <laughs> it neither one. Actually. Well, listen, I mean, if it got burned to the ground, it would technically be deleted. I deleted it from earth. Um, it's just frust. It's so frustrating because I sure hope it doesn't catch on fire tomorrow, <laughs> really you know, do. and, uh, <laughs> Some insurance adjuster listens to this <laughs> podcast and we're in jail for insurance fraud. Here's it's I have a listen, I have a I have a a uh I have a problem about being in jail, just so you know. Okay. I'm with you. The frustrating part about it is before I started turning wrenches myself and trying to do this diagnostics, my complaint against the mechanic industry was that they were parts changers. Well, we'll just throw parts at it. And so as I begin to learn, I'm like, well, I certainly don't want to be the thing that I hate. I don't want to be a parts changer. I don't want to be somebody that just throws parts at a truck. Well, 
the D-Deck 5 has kind of put us in a position to where sometimes you just have to throw parts at it and see what sticks. And that that can get expensive. A V-Pod's 500 bucks. A Turbo's $2,000. And I hate that I have now, because now I'm sitting here and I'm doing it. And I'm going, okay, well, I literally, I've done every bit of research that I can, and I've read all the manuals, and I've watched all the videos, and I've done everything I can, and all I'm left with is, let's try turbo and see if that fixes it. At least on the new trucks, as much as we have uh, disliked uh, the newer emission systems, <clears throat> the diagnostics <laughs> and the diagnostic opportunities are pretty good compared to uh compared to egr you know with the older diesels if they had fuel air and compression they would run they might not run great but they'll run um and you either had a fuel problem an air problem or some kind of uh, uh mechanical issue so anyway back to the original question the dpf alternative is a way of cleaning the filters inspecting and this is something that chase has taught me that you need to be uh, you need to have an awareness of your DPF system and your one box because the welds matter. Cracks matter. Um, the, the fundamental, you know, security uh, of that box <coughs> matters. Um, and so those are things that you could see from the outside because you can't see inside unless you take it apart. And so um, we're learning so much more about them and they're becoming so much more manageable. And we've, you've, you've probably heard us over the last couple of years talking about when is lunatic 2.0 going to happen? Because we know it's coming. You can't, we can't run these O these 99 to O seven trucks forever. Eventually they're going to be obsolete. And Larry has said for probably three or four years on this podcast that there will come a point where the price, the entry level price, the acquisition cost of one of these newer trucks is low enough. Well, we're there. I mean, we're seeing 16 and 17 Cascadias in the 15 to $17,000 range. We're seeing 19, 20, and 21s in the 20 to $25,000 range. So now they're becoming cheap enough to be able to acquire one, do whatever's necessary to it with suspension and, and, and adding the, the different fuel mileage modifications. We're finally kind of getting there. Um, I guess we'll see what happens over the next year because y'all there are trucks for selling for 25 grand right now that two years ago were $200,000. So maybe, um, uh, maybe we're there. I don't know permanently. I, I mean, I guess the market could come back up, but um, it's kind of kind of unlikely. You have anything to add to that? <clears throat> well, we we're you know we we've been experimenting. We we now think that we have got these uh, newer trucks where they're reliable and that we can actually fix the problems. Um, we've kind of proven it with ones that we've, that we've tested. Uh, I think um, us having our own shop is going to help a lot there because we're and right now we're so dependent on the the abilities of other people, and pretty soon we won't have to worry about that because we'll have our own um, facility and our own people to do the things the way we want to have it done. So I think that we're probably going to be in this uh, 2.0 lunatic truck fairly fairly quick. Um, it's not that we can't run the old ones for a long time; we just can't find them that many of them anymore. Yeah. getting harder harder to find um so uh but no i think i think it's going to be um a viable business model soon and uh we haven't hit the bottom with these trucks i mean there's so many people right now that are going to get out of the business because they can't stay in the business that these trucks are going to be uh if you got the money and you've got the situation where you can take advantage of it there's going to be lots of opportunities to buy these trucks for her next to nothing to, to bail somebody out. And, um, but this is where you have to kind of watch and be ready to jump on the opportunity, uh, because these are going to, you know, they're going to, they're going to show up, but they're not going to be there very long because for the prices that they're going to go for, they're going to go quickly. 
Um, and, uh, um, you know, we're, we're ready to do that. So, um, no, I, I think, I think the 2.0 thing is right around. Uh, matter of fact, I think we'll probably be doing some of our own in our shop, you know, um, I, I kind of, I kind of think that we'll be doing, we'll be looking more for these trucks, uh, you know, but, you know, because some of our guys coming on now are auto restricted and uh, we have to kind of get a newer truck to get an automatic transmission that's reliable. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I think we, everything's pointed in that direction. Absolutely. And we know we can get fuel mileage out of them. We know oh, we yeah. can fix the, the emission problem, you know, with the, with the diesel force cleaning, the DPF and the catalyst, we don't have any issue, any emissions issues, you know, so we really don't, we don't. Um, so we, we, we've, we've conquered that. The thing that we hated the most about it, we have fixed and, um, you know, and we've got a couple of experimented with that. We have proven that too. So we've got the proof of concept. Uh, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to moving in that direction sooner than later, actually. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mike on mm -hmm. YouTube asked if a person is able to find a lunatic truck with a million plus supposedly running and driving for six to eight, is that okay? I'm guessing six to 8,000. I'm sure. Absolutely. Um, really uh -huh. what you're looking for is a truck with a solid frame. Everything else yeah. is yeah. replaceable and, and fixable. <clears throat> six to eight. I mean, look, there, the parts on it. You know, we, we kind of look at 10. If it's under 10, we're not even, we're just going to write the check because we need the, uh, we need the, the carcass, if you will. Okay. Right. Um, because there's so many good parts on it that you can recover that money quickly. Um, and at six to eight, if it's running, especially if the guy's got any kind of documentation at all, service records, anything like that, that backs up the fact that it's running and doing what it says to do uh, a little bit of background there. You don't, you don't have to do a lot cause you're not paying a lot for it, but you could get a, a, um, dig, a rig dig report. And you could also take it somewhere and have the ECM downloaded. Mm -hmm. And you know a whole lot about that truck. That's, you know, that's not tire kicking and used car salesman kind of stuff. Uh, but no, I, I wouldn't, I mean, absolutely. That, that's exactly what we, that's what we look for is that truck right there. Uh, now it has to be spec. I mean, you, you know, the price is good, but if it's spec wrong, it doesn't matter. You're going to have to spend a lot of money to get it respect. Right. So it's got to be the right drive line. It's got to be the right motor. You know, there's, there's some things that we want to look at about it. Um, but for that, for that, not for that number, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it too much because, you know, yeah. there's, uh, the parts on it that you could take off and sell or use on another truck down the road. Is certainly going to exceed the price that you're going to pay for it. Um, yeah, I would say if you're not interested in buying it, let us know where it is so that we could. Okay. So. Yeah. Randy Wheeler mm -hmm. asks on YouTube: Is there a trade-off in traction when going to low rolling resistance tires and over inflating them? Overs in quotes. Um, I, listen, I'm going to tell you: I never drove a truck with super singles until I started driving for Blue Ribbon in 2018. Um, I ran New York and Pennsylvania um, on a dedicated run every uh, day for three years um, in ice and <clears> snow. <throat> I never got hung up, not ever one time. Uh, I never got loose on me. I never crashed. Um, I was on farms and in little parking lots, and I never, ever had any kind of traction problem with a roll, low rolling resistance tire. Uh, in three years of driving, uh, Larry's been running single since 2009. Um, he's got a truck with 1.8 million, uh, that didn't crash until Seth crashed it. Um, bless his heart. Um, but, uh, you know, you know, the, the, uh, if you think about the physics on that, okay, the contact patch on a super single is bigger than the contact pack patch on a pair of duels. True. So from a physics standpoint, the traction should be better um, because you got more, more rubber contacting the road. Um, now, I'm not a, I'm not a engineer, but when you start trying to make common sense out of it, you got more, more tire touching the road on a wide base single than you do on a pair of duels. <clears throat> yeah. 
And, you know, we, we just don't, we, you know, we hear all this. We have just not experienced it. We got, we got millions of miles on wide base singles. Okay. Millions. Um, and we just, we don't experience these, these myths that everybody talks about. You know, we just don't have the problem with it. And you have to understand there's a trade-off there. The money we save on fuel and tire costs, um, there, there's gotta be some, some, um, value added to that because that's the whole reason to do it is because it lowers your cost of operation and it doesn't hurt you in any way. I mean, it'd be one thing if we're giving up something, but we're not, it's just, right. it's just give. it's just having to make people who have this bias or this prejudice because of somebody, somebody, something somebody's told them down the road that happened to one of their buddies once, you know, uh, is, is now, is now, uh, clouded their, you know, their, um, idea about it because of some crazy story that somebody had that, that it blew out and lost their wheel. Okay. Uh, if hey, it, and I have a story about that. Now we, we did the math on this. <clears throat> you have been running singles since 2009. And I think we came up with, you had four blowouts, right? Mm -hmm. Four, maybe it was five over all that time. And we lost one wheel. Okay. In all the, and I think I figured it up one day, it was something like 6 million miles. Okay. And we lost one wheel. We have a guy that uh, was mentoring client, uh, blew a tire. He has duels. Um, and he said it blew and I immediately hit the shoulder and he called the road service out and they, and I said, we'll bring you two, you know, cause you gotta, when you have a duel, you gotta get two. And he was had duels and his wheel was destroyed when the tire blew. So obviously I'm not happy that happened to him. Um, but the only time that I know of in my career of a wheel being destroyed by a blown tire was on a duel, not a single, because the wheel problem that we had was the two of those blowouts were caused by a defective wheel. The wheel wasn't destroyed, but we had to get rid of it because we figured out that it had caused the problem. But here's a guy that has a blowout with a duel and loses a wheel. We've run six million miles. Um, I, you know, so I could, what I'm saying is I could use that, that anecdotal evidence to say, ah, oh, see, if you run duels and you blow a tire, it's going to destroy your rim. Oh, don't go jinxing us. Well, hey, well, listen, we've been talking about this for a long time. So if it was going to jinx us, it already got us. Uh, the, don't pay attention to the peanut gallery over here sitting beside me. You ought to go get me another beer is what you ought to do. You know, the, we, we do everything with data, okay? We don't worry about what other people say. As a matter of fact, when other people say it, we usually just laugh at it and do it anyway. But, um, I mean, the numbers just don't lie. And when you look at, we look at the lack of problems we have versus the amount of money that we make because of the improved fuel, fuel economy, it's not even, a, it's not even, it's, it's a no brainer if there ever was one, you look at that and you go, there's, there's no comparison, you know, um, we just, we, you know, we, and now, now here's another thing. We spend a couple hundred bucks and we put tire pressure monitors on all the trucks that we have singles on. And so if you pay attention to that, you know, if a tire is going to blow before it blows. So if you're worried about that, spend 200 bucks on tire pressure monitors and take that out of your word, you know, stack. Um, cause we can predict a tire blowing far long before it blows just because of the temperature that the tire start, uh, that that tire starts running under, you know? Um, but again, it's all yeah. about, it's all about, it's not because we like them. It's not because we think they look cool. It's not even because of the traction. It's because of the money. You know, we're in business to make money. And if running super singles makes us more money, that's what we're going to do. I tell you, I like them better. Um, Absolutely. Here, now, here's, here's, a, here's a comment you're going to like. Good. The first four words. Do you have a calculator? Oh, yes, we do. You know damn mm -hmm. sure we do. Do you have a calculator example of return on investment for going to super singles from duels, rims and all. Well, you bet your sweet. Absolutely, we, we do. do. Okay, so, um, 
what we do, like we'll use, there's a shop up in Indy, the tire shop that we'll use. And if we give them eight aluminums, they will give us four aluminum singles. So that cost is zero. The cost of two duels, good ones, versus one single is almost a wash. Hell, it might be. I'd have to look it up on the um, LCAP website, but I got way too much going on on this computer right now to do that in real time. Uh, but I'm going to tell you it's almost a wash as far as pulling into a shop with eight tires and pulling out of the shop with four it's going to be incredibly close on cost of the tires the mm. wheels are going to wash um what larry said and and the and the and the, the single uh, or the comment follows up on that if you're going to run duels if you're going to run anything but especially with duels you must have a cat's eye or a crossfire and you must have tire pressure monitors because if you have uneven pressure, if you have uneven wear, you are going to destroy those tires, good tires or bad tires. It could be junk double coins or it could be brand new Michelin top of the line. If your air pressure is wrong, if those tires are mismatched in any way, they are going to get destroyed prematurely. So it, at that point, the argument isn't even about single versus dual. It's, it's a conversation about how, I mean, tires are a big investment. A set of singles right now is about five grand to buy four of them in one shot. Did I do that right? Or is it six? Almost six grand. Yeah, about five to 5,500 yeah. to buy four brand new <clears throat> singles, okay? So it's going to be about the same to buy eight brand new duels. Regardless of what the tire is, if it's not properly inflated, if it's not mounted properly, if it's not wearing, you're, you're like, I feel like we're, we get hung up arguing about low rolling resistance tires versus buying the cheapest thing you can find but you're still not taking care of your tires. You're still not monitoring your air pressure to make sure it's right. So even if you buy junk tires and your alignment's bad and you wear them out in 18 months when they could last you three years, like let's, I mean, let's talk about that too, but nobody seems to want to talk about that. Um, the, the, the calculator says, did I bring the official BSC? I did. I have the official BSC 9000 with me. The calculator says that a good set of low rolling resistance tires over the life of those tires is not only going to save you more than they cost you, they're going to save you as much as $10,000 a year throughout the life of those tires. So if you're considering everything that's involved in a tire, choosing the right tire, making sure the alignment is good, making sure that the tire pressure is good, making sure that the tire pressure is consistent, making sure that you understand if I've got a pinhole in my tire and it's slowly leaking down and I don't know it, it's a, it's a much broader conversation than should I run singles or duels or should I run good tires versus junk tires? It's a big investment. Regardless of what you buy, you should be taking care of your tires. You should be taking care of your truck. You should be taking care of your oil. You should be taking care of your air filter. Like it's so many little things that add up because I always get the question, well, well, how much is it going to save me? The, the variables are infinite, but every little thing that you do to that truck is going to add up to a cumulative number that could be the difference in survival, success, and failure. That's what we're trying to get to. Look at the big picture. What is the big picture? If I'm going to buy a truck, what's the point of buying that truck? To make a profit. 
y'all, a bunch of y'all are obsessed with rate per mile. You don't give a shit about cost per mile. That's where your profit comes from. Your profit does not come from rate per mile. It comes from managing cost per mile because that's the one thing in the, gosh, what about I've been here now, six years? That's the thing that he has taught me above anything else is the one thing that you can manage that you can't blame on anybody else is managing your cost per mile. You better not walk back in this door without bringing me one. Okay. Y'all going to watch a wrestling match live on the Blue Ribbon podcast. Okay. All right, good. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. All right, let's look at some other comments. Uh, <clears throat> there, there are more problems with duels than we've ever seen in singles because the number one problem with duels is that drivers will not keep the – the uh, air pressure the same in both tires, right? And that just that just that's just a disaster waiting to happen. Literally, now you don't have the problem with singles. You know, uh, it's not hard to check the air pressure on the inside tire. You don't have to use those thumpers and walk around and act like you know <laughs> what the tire pressure is inside of it. Um, again, give us credit for something. We're pretty good business people here. Okay, if it if there was any, if it was even close, it might be a discussion. But it's not close. There's no way you're ever going to convince me to run a set of duels on one of our trucks. It is not going to happen because uh, we do this for one reason only to make money. That's why we're in business. That's what I get up for. And um, this is not even, it's not even a close argument. It's just, it's completely one-sided. Uh, but, but the, the, what makes it an argument is the prejudice and the bias that people have against them because they've heard some story that somebody happened to them one time and it sounds like this this big, big deal. Well, you know, I had a blowout and I couldn't limp in. Well, limp in sometime on a set of duels and get caught and find out what that costs you. <clears throat> right. So I have a um, – there's a question here. Okay, I just want to confirm that that was right. Here you go. Um, there's a question from Felton J., uh, is there an example of your Excel spreadsheet I can use still learning how to use Excel and I just need a template? Yes. Uh, if, Excel spreadsheet for what? Like load tracking and stuff. Okay. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> um, we actually have it in Excel and in numbers. Correct. So mm -hmm. if you go either on TikTok or YouTube, whatever, in our link in bio, it's a beacons page. Uh, there's a link to our load tracking spreadsheets now we don't have like an expense tracking spreadsheet we 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 have one that's really 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 good at tracking the income okay um but for tracking expenses you i would suggest profit gauges as a very basic good enough better than nothing um then there's quickbooks and what's that other one you were talking about switching to uh, peach tree called peach tree. it's called sage now sage yeah um mm -hmm. those are those are real deal accounting softwares profit gauges is is like we said good enough and better than nothing it has an interface that's easy for you to use doesn't matter if you're leased to a carrier or whatever you have the ability to 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 track all of your uh expenses both cash expenses and settlement uh expenses um, so I'm not going to try to reinvent the wheel when somebody else has already created, uh, an inexpensive product. What's profit gauges? 19 bucks, 19 a, month bucks a month. Yeah. Um, there's no need for me to reinvent the wheel. However, our load tracking spreadsheet, you can download in Apple numbers, Microsoft Excel, and then there's a way to import that into Google sheets. So if you're Android, iPhone, or Windows, we have a way for you to do that. Um, now, we designed that. Yeah, uh, but I don't. I don't have. I don't have a spreadsheet for keeping up with expenses because there's too much stuff on the market that's a thousand times better than anything that I could come up with. Now, as far as basic spreadsheets go, um, there's 10 million YouTube videos on how to build spreadsheets. Um, I learned how to build spreadsheets 
from watching videos. I'm a numbers guy. I use Apple everything. Um, but you know, Apple, Excel, whatever. Um, so a lot of that just comes down to trust yourself to go seek the information and learn. Um, uh, yeah, it's fine to have somebody give something to you, but there's a huge amount of value in the journey of going through and sitting down and watching a video and someone will show you how to do the formulas and the sales. It's you, not, you can't find our load sheet anywhere except from us, mm -hmm. but there's plenty of off the shelf software that tracks expenses. I mean, those are, they go to any office depot or, I mean, those are everywhere. Those are not hard to find and they're very different. Um, you know, different. All right. What, what do you, it's just a you, reminder. Oh, okay. Um, they're, you know, they're, they're very inexpensive and they're very uh, different, uh, skill levels. Those are, those are, I mean, profit gauge is probably the easiest one. It's, it's sort of designed for truck drivers. It's kind of truck driver friendly, but listen, any, any expense tracking software, you could even use, you know, QuickBooks or not QuickBooks, but Quicken, you know, like the home right. version. Yeah. It, any, there, it's just not hard to do. You know, it, it's very easy to do. There's no reason for us to invent that because there's plenty of them already invented. We invented this because we couldn't find anybody that had what we do uh, in a prepackaged uh, off the shelf software. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Oh, what was this comment I just saw in that thing? How come I'm not seeing any of these comments? Uh, well, maybe you're not looking. I'm looking at YouTube on Restream. Oh, I'm looking at TikTok on my iPad. You could probably just open. I can uh, open Restream on my on my desktop. You, yeah, you might be better off to look at YouTube. Just just go to YouTube, and uh, they're probably easier for you to get to. On on my desktop. Yeah. YouTube? Okay. Yeah. Just youtube.com slash blue ribbon logistics. Um, somebody asked what tile pressure uh, monitoring system do we use? We use one called TST truck. I think it's truck systems technology. You can buy it from a website called techno RV.com. It's about 480 ish dollars for a uh, system that comes with six sensors. Now, obviously, we have singles, so we only have six tires, but our uh, firm recommendation is that if you have duals, you need to have a cat's eye or crossfire, and you can put one monitor on it and monitor it as if you have singles because you need something keeping the air pressure in those tires identical. Um. Someone said, um, I'm afraid due to the Buckeye fan, 1976. I'm afraid of the cost of the singles due to the type of work I do. My luck, I'd put an $1,800 tire and then pull into a scrap yard and pick up a bolt or something. Obviously, you have to make good, good decisions based on where you're running. If you're running the roads, you absolutely need to invest in good How tires. is that different than, running, than taking a bolt in a duel? Uh, well, I, listen, I've been in scrapyards, and I can tell you that if that's what you're doing every day, um, I probably would be less inclined to put really expensive tires on a truck if I'm going into a scrapyard every day. Now, if you're just going into a scrapyard once a quarter or once a year, that's a BS excuse. But, again, you get out your calculator – and you do the math, and you think about the risk. Um, Larry is right. Most steering holders don't even know how to read a gauge, uh, nor do DOT officers, apparently, because we had a guy last year got put out of service because the road pirate comes up with a tire thumper and thumps the tire, Maryland, on I-68, wasn't it? Thumps the tire and went, that tire's flat. Now, if I'd have been standing there, I'd have been like, bitch, where's the gauge? All right, get your tire gauge out uh, before you put me out of service with a tire thumper. Y'all, listen. I, I almost went to jail in Canada for a tire thumper. <laughs> <clears throat> I did get detained. <clears throat> uh, I saw this awful story today. I don't know if I told you about this. It happened in March. 
where a scammer, one of these people that calls you and tries to get you to give them money, right? Call this 81 year old man. And they were trying to scam him and get money out of him. So it happened in Ohio. At the same time, they scammed an Uber driver into going to his house to pick up a package. Papa come out of the house with a gun and shot and killed that lady Uber driver. And these scammers had put them together, right? I had to have a I had to have a very uncomfortable talk with my 80 plus year old mom that mom, you can't believe everything that somebody tells you. You just can't. You have to be skeptical. You have to ask questions. And you have to be willing to say, hey, stop, hang up. Because my mom has gotten calls like she's gotten the Nigerian lottery scam, I don't know, eight or ten years ago. I got this letter in the mail, and this guy, and and in Nigeria, I said, stop. Please stop. You know? But the reason I'm bringing this up is that appeal to authority because the scammer called. So after old boy shoots and kills this lady, and the co- and he calls the cops. The cops show up. The scammer calls while the cops are there. And the cop answers the phone on speaker, and he goes, hey, you're going to be in big trouble. And she was like, well, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a deputy sheriff. Click. When someone can just intimidate you into making a decision, and that's this, 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 this trucking marketing machine that <clears throat> convinces people to do really, really risky, dumb things like lease trucks. For whatever reason, humanity has lost the ability to reason and say, is this really beneficial to me? Or is this just beneficial to you, the carrier? Is this really just beneficial to you, the leasing company? Is this really beneficial to me, the truck driver? Well, the answer to that should be absolutely not. But we have people that are unable to comprehend and read contracts, and they walk into a room they're not allowed out of until they close their eyes as tight as they can and sign their name on this piece of paper that they can't even understand. All right, but that on. but that doesn't send up a red flag, right? Yeah, why 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 would you think for a minute that someone is going to get me in a room, which unfortunately, Larry, you know, they're not going to say, "Hey, can I can I take this contract to my lawyer and have them look it over?" I, because if they would, that would end a lot of it. But instead, we're going to we're going to ask the U.S. Congress uh, to do a lease a truck lease. Isn't it a truck lease task force or some nonsense? I, w- I wish the hell I could have gotten on that. <laughs> that have been that have been the most fun you could have with your clothes on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and now they're and of course you know they're. I can't f- believe I didn't get nominated to be on that. You guys out there in YouTube world and everywhere, how'd y'all not get that? Let that happen. Well, uh, apparently Saturday they're voting to ban TikTok. Um, yeah. Well, you know, the listen. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know that there's a nice way to say this. There are 435 human beings that compromise and make up. Compromise is that the right word? Comprise. Comprise. Thank you. You're welcome. Let me have another drink. <clears throat> There's 435 people that comprise the United States Congress. There's 535. There's, uh, you you can't use the word people in that phrase. Okay. There are human human organisms. Uh, organisms uh that make up the US Congress. 435 of them are in the House and 100 of them are in the Senate. And I'm convinced that about 97% of them aren't smart enough to make a piece of toast. Yet, they're just dumb enough to be scammed by some 
lobbyists whispering in their ear. Ooh, this TikTok. No, it's not the ear they're whispering in. They're they're whispering in their wallet. Well, that too. They're just dumb enough to sell people on this nonsense about TikTok and China and national security. But the worst part of it is, number one, they think it's even possible that they can ban <laughs> an app. They can ban a website. Like, that. That's they might as well ban sunshine. They might as well ban breezes that, that, that blow through trees. Uh, so the first part, the, the fact that they even think it's possible, and secondly, that they think they have the right to do that. Uh, they don't, by the way, just stating that for the record. They don't have the right to do that. Um, they don't have the authority to do that, and they're not going to do that. I'm sure it's just some chicken shit uh, uh, distraction from whatever other piece of, of evil, immoral nonsense they're up to. We do have VPNs. I mean, literally, there's a VPN on my phone. If I want to make myself look like I'm standing in the middle of Africa, all I have to do is push one button, and all of a sudden, the TikTok man don't matter anymore. Um, but anyway, I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, let's look for some more comments. Oh, I now saw one from Wesley Staten. He said he would like to see a video of me um, mounting a super single with hand tools. I'm glad you pulled that out. <laughs> when you got to the word mounting, I was starting to get worried. A video of you <laughs> mounting. No, thank you. <laughs> a, sing, a super Well, he, actually, <clears throat> it gets worse because I think it said, uh, mounting a single. He didn't say what <laughs> a single what. He just said mounting a single. Anyway, this is devolved into something <clears> terrible. <throat> Listen, I've seen I've seen girls. I've seen videos of girls changing super singles. Have you seen uh, that, Chris? I have. Uh, listen, I did one. I did a steer tire last week. That's not a super single. I know. Uh, but it was awful. Um. I did one with Carl a couple of years ago. We were at the Go Mart parking lot, of course, the headquarters of Bone Cutter Truck Repair. <laughs> and uh, uh, and I thought, you know, listen, I have watched these guys change these tires so many times. Right. You know, you got your two bars, and you you know, you put one in, and you do this. You know, you talk about a cluster. Um, and so I finally get. I got it off, right, which it completely whipped my ass and took me like 45 minutes just to get the tire off the rim. And then I go to put the other tire on. And, I've well, again, I've watched him do this. I'm 27 years in the trucking industry. I've watched these guys mount these tires like it's nothing. <laughs> you know how they'll lay it down on the rim and they do that little jump hop thing? Yeah. Right, listen, ass over tea kettle. You know, I'm laying upside down and Carl looks over there and he's like, I don't know what the problem is. And he just jumps, you know, and whoop, whoop, and it's, you know, completely mounted on the bead. I'm still laying on the ground upside down with blood coming on my forehead. Um, you know, they make a machine to mount those, right? Uh, well, listen, uh, that's going to be, that's going to be one of my contributions. You know, if, if we, if we make a billion dollars doing MD alignments, I'm going to find those tire mounting tools and they're going to be on the ground at camps because I watched Zane, uh, the foreman do a couple of singles and it was a nightmare, you know? Uh, but what are you mumbling about? I'm not mumbling. <laughs> of course. Uh, yeah, I do not. I do not like tire work at all i found that shit out the hard way okay tires suck tires are terrible i want absolutely nothing to do with tires <clears throat> uh let's see looking for more comments how long so how long you predicted the old 2007 units will last well i mean hell they'll last forever they'll last until the frame breaks i mean um, it's just a matter of practicality. Okay. Perfect example. 
Freightliner started building the FLD truck, I think, in like 1988, and it ran through about 2002 or three. It's a great truck. It's a fantastic truck. Um, they're they're tough. They're well built. Um, you know, if you spec one out the right way, you could get good fuel mileage out of it. But it comes down to practicality. The getting parts for an FLD right now is a challenge, especially like body parts, interior parts, stuff like that. The Century Columbia was still being produced. I don't know. Hell, I saw a 2020 glider last year. So they were still producing parts for those. They were still producing them on the assembly line as, as, as much as four years ago. So parts are not a problem. But if we get to the point where it begins to be difficult to find parts for them, um, there was a truck the other day. What were we talking about? Um, I can't remember what the part was, but it was like a, it was like a 2001 truck or something. And I called the Detroit shop. I was talking to Steve and he goes, well, Hey, um, yeah, I can get you one. Just by the way, there's one in the entire country. One. That's the point where it will become too cumbersome or too inefficient to operate those trucks because if you can't get parts for them, you're screwed. We have a hard enough time finding parts for trucks that were built six months ago. Which is why that truck for $6,000 you talked about earlier is attractive because the parts are worth more than, the, than, than that. Yeah, 100%. Uh, yeah. And, and, you know, and like I talked about, like I, I have, and listen, I, I'm, 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 I'm an old school trucker. Okay. Y'all, I love the three seventy nines and the W nines of, of, of the old days. Love them. There's no greater driving experience. Okay. But Kenworth, Pacar, Kenworth and Peterbilt have become this nightmare to deal with. And I've seen it not with our trucks. I've seen it in cams where you'll call the dealer, hey, I need this part. And they'll be like, okay, yep, uh, it, it, uh, it's a two-week lead time. Okay. Well, the next question naturally is, well, okay, well, what's it going to have to, what's it going to cost to have it overnighted? Oh, well, you can't because they're built to order. What? A part for a truck that needs to run 365 days a year has a two-week lead time because when you order the part, they have to make it? How the hell did we get there in 2024? We experienced it with a T680. That was, the, that was this mind-blowing, eye-opening experience that we had a few years ago because they've got this pipe and it's got all these branches off of it and it runs coolant to different places on the engine. And Carl said, Hey man, we need to get this thing replaced because it's going to fail. Okay. So I'm like, Oh, great. Not a problem, man. Let's go ahead and order one now so that we're not sitting on the side of the road. It was three weeks because they're made to order. You, you can't make it and set it on the shelf? No, it's got to be made to order. We, we are going to wait until you call us, and then we're going to make it, and then we'll ship it. to. It's just the nonsense of that. How in the hell did we get to that place? Let me segue to Carl Bonecutter real quick. Carl is out of the hospital after having a double lung transplant. Now he's got to stay up in Cleveland for another three months, but I had texted him yesterday, uh, a picture of me in front of the truck, having done a couple of turbos and saying, dude, I don't know how you did it. And he responded and said, you know, it sure is nice to see you with that grease all over your face. Hmm. Um, but, uh, so he's, I mean, he's doing fantastic. Um, 
but I have now seen, it's been a, I don't know, what would you say, a year or 18 months since Carl has been the Carl that we're used to, you know? Um, our trucks are in disrepair as I've been bringing them in and I've been looking and going, if Carl had been looking at these trucks <clears throat> over this last 18 months, they would not be in the shape they were in because, um, you know, we, uh, uh, um, Hey, what you going to do about this? You know, um, that's the, that's the thing that we've been missing. Now I'm trying to step into those shoes and they are enormous shoes to fill. Uh, don't know that I ever can. Um, but it's shown in a year, uh, of our trucks not being, uh, seen by somebody like Carl, uh, that they're coming in and I'm going, how did we miss this? How, I, how did this problem get to this level? Um, and, and now I see it because we did not have Carl. And so if, cause you damn sure know truck drivers don't do pre-trips. I'm going to, I'm going to go out I'm going to give you a prediction right now and you can write it down that I said this on whatever it was today, what is today, April 19th. Mm -hmm. Carl, Carl, Carl Bonecutter will have some, what's the word I want to use? Some input connection connection. Okay. To the blue ribbon shop. I will promise you that I will make it my life's goal to, to do it. And I will make one other prediction. Seth Coberly will have a position at with Blue Ribbon Logistics again in the near future. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, what are truck rentals like these days? Couldn't tell you. We we're at Landstar, we're not able to do um uh we're not able to rent trucks. And it, y'all, it's stupid expensive. Like it's it's ridiculous. It's not expensive. a viable business model. No, not at all. Box jockeys are inferior beings. Quote. That has from to be Barbara. Phil. That's Barbara Niggin. Oh, well, she's <laughs> she's so proud of herself because she just recently shed the box jockey jersey and put on the platform jersey. She's so proud of herself. How's she doing, by the way? She screwed anything up yet? Uh, not yet. Not yet. But listen. Has she tarped her load yet? I'm watching. She's got pink straps. I saw that. She's got hot pink. Uh, hot. Let's let's just stop. I just that's going in a direction I don't need it to go. Um, hey, I've got one for you. <laughs> so I have a friend, um, who had asked me for a recommendation for his brother-in-law as far as getting into trucking. Now his brother-in-law is an immigrant from Kenya. So my friend is married to a woman from Kenya. And so the brother-in-law comes over here and they said, well, you know, what do you think about him getting into trucking? I'm like, that's not a terrible idea. I said, however, I'm going to tell you this right now. I want you to get a job, get your CDL, do not get an automatic transmission restriction and then go to a company and I want you to stay there for a year. I don't care how bad you hate it. I don't care how bad you think it sucks. You will stay at that carrier for one year regardless. Well, it's been 90 days. He goes, hey, he calls me. He says, hey, man, will you talk to my brother-in-law? And I'm like, yeah, I'll be glad to. Well, uh, I, I am being offered 50 cents per mile from us express and my carriers paying me 38 cents. And I said, okay, all right. So that's 12 cents a mile more. Okay. Yes. Um, he's like, well, do you think I should do this? And I said, no, I don't think you should do this because number one, I told you to stay there for a year, no matter how bad you, th you, you hate it and you think it sucks, you need to stay there for a year, but, 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 but 50 cents, 50 cents per mile. And I said, okay, well, number one, recruiters will lie to you. There will be all kinds of fine print that you don't understand. So you need to stay there. So here's my recommendation. 
I think you should go to your driver leader. I think so. That's what they call dispatchers. Handler. <laughs> Handler. You should go to your driver leader and say, listen, I would like to learn how to make more money. So how do I make myself more valuable at this carrier? What are the things that I can do to make me better and make me more money? I said, if you will do that, you will set yourself apart from every other truck driver there and they'll go, oh, wow. So this guy's not a regular truck driver, but he's just stuck. He's, ah, oh, but, but, uh, but I've already told the guy in the U.S. Express and I said, listen, I don't know. I don't know what language they speak in Kenya. It might be like Swahili. It's called Kenyan. Maybe it is. Anyway, I said, I don't know. And the reason I bring this up, because I know how much Richie loved this. I said, I don't know in your <clears throat> language, in your culture, if you can get this. But here in the United States, in American English, we have a saying that says the grass is not always greener on the other side of the fence. Okay. And the reason that the grass appears greener, Richie's already losing it. The reason that the grass appears greener on the other side of the fence is because it's fertilized with horse shit. Okay. Now I can hear my buddy like laughing in the background as I'm telling this Kenyan, this African dude trying to get him to understand. Um, and I said, so, you know, have your brother-in-law, if he needs to help you understand this, this, this English reference. Um, but I can't imagine being a new driver in 2024 coming into this industry with whatever, God help you, basic education you got in American government school and being dumped into this industry. Um, I mean, it just, it gives me the shakes just trying to think about. And so here's this dude from Kenya. I mean, he's, he's fresh off the boat, you know, and he's probably only been in the state six months, and in three months he's driving a truck, and they dangle. Hey, oh, 50 cents a mile. Come over here. We'll give you 50 cents a mile. Yeah, I bet you will. I bet there, there's, there's fine print a mile long. And I told him, I said, dude, if you lease a truck, so help me God, I will personally come and find you and ship your ass back to Kenya. Do not lease a truck, whatever the hell you do. <clears throat> Just. You what's, like with, it, Richie? what's wrong with Richie? He, he bounces. He bounces when he laughs. Why is he laughing? I guess it's I, I guess it's because he was there for the conversation. Um <clears throat> uh, Phil Richie says, uh, come to the dark side. We have steak and beer over there. Well, Richie's wanting to save up some money. Um, so speaking of new drivers, uh, that kind of gave me a little segue to, I thought of something. Go ahead. We have, uh, some, we have some new trucks, not new trucks, but additional trucks in our, coming into our system. And we are looking for some guys to come, guys or gals to come get in the program and learn how to do this business properly. Not sure that you, you might need to be here more than six months from Kenya, but, um, <laughs> Anyway, we have an opportunity we don't always have, and that's that we could put people on right now in the program and share our experience and our knowledge with you in our program and and um, and seat you immediately. Um, so if you've thought about this before, you've listened to our our YouTube videos and you this attracts you, uh, now is a, is a perfect opportunity because we don't always have an opportunity like this. But... Um, We've, uh, we've added a few trucks and, um, and we we're looking desperately to put people in them. So if you're interested, uh, go to our website, www.blueribbonlogistics.com. And there, what do they, what do they click on Chris? Uh, the master class. There's, the there's a class. button there that gives a complete explanation of the class and how it works and the terms and the the timing and everything uh, that's entailed. And then there is a button that says apply for the master class. And there will be a bunch of questions there for you to answer. Um, and once you answer those questions, we will set up with an interview with you where we will 
um, punch you in the mouth over and over again. Um, through, through Zoom, by the way, not, not yeah. in person. <laughs> not physically, but figuratively, um, there, there will be violence um, because we have to make sure you understand what you're getting into. We do not offer truck driving jobs. That's not what we're doing here. We are giving you an opportunity to, 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 to see behind the curtain of what it looks like to run a trucking business. You have absolute, complete view of everything. And as the old saying goes, sometime once you've seen how the sausage is made, you don't want to eat sausage anymore. I've noticed this disturbing trend since I have, because I've listened for all my life up until I was about 40, I never got exposed to human resources. I never got exposed. Give me a blue moon. I've never been exposed to hiring and firing employees and all that kind of stuff that Larry did for all those years, right? But there, we get applications on the end of two spectrums. On one spectrum are 65 to 75-year-olds who have suddenly woken up to the realization that they have no retirement, they have no savings. I'm 65 to 75 years old, so maybe I should go buy a truck because I'm going to make a million dollars in three years if I'll operate and own a truck, and that will make up for my 75 years of not preparing for retirement. And on the other end, we will get young kind of go-getters you know, and they're like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to come and do the program. And then they go, Ooh, yuck. I have to work hard. No, thank you. Or, Oh, well, listen, man, I've come in here for six months. I've got everything figured out. Uh huh. No, you don't. So on one side, okay. And this, for the young people, I want y'all to hear this because what I don't want you to be is the 70 year old guy filling out an application for the blue ribbon master class because he's realized that he's gotten to 70 years old and doesn't have any way to retire. I would rather y'all sit aside the kind of know it all attitude that has had has kind of permeated into the younger generations that y'all don't, y'all don't need to learn nothing. Y'all don't need to listen to nothing. You just need to buy a course on TikTok, you know, for, for $79.95 and somebody will give you all the 15 secret keys to success. Bullshit. This is hard. Okay. And that's why we say this, this interview process is so brutal because we're going to tell you how hard it is. And we're going to tell you that while it's hard and while it's difficult, we're not going to give a shit about your feelings. If you come into this program with the management team that we now have, and we have a pretty incredible management team. All right. So other here on the other side of the screen, you have a 50 year businessman that has had levels of success in one, two, three, four different, four different industries. You have a 10 plus year BCO that does heavy haul who has forgotten more about platform than a bunch of you will ever learn. You have a 27 year truck driver, fleet manager, chief cook and bottle washer, mechanic guy you have a blue ribbon program graduate that has been everywhere that you're going to be in the last four years and you have a multiple truck owner guy who works two or three weeks in alaska up on the slope the management team the coaching team the coaching team that you have available to you versus 
going at this by yourself. Um, and just, well, I'll just go buy a truck and I'll just go to Landstar and everything will work out. Well, no, it won't. Um, you need to understand how difficult being in business is because it's really, really, really tough, especially right now in 2024, the way the market is. Market sucks right now. You have to work twice as hard to make half of the money that you made in 2022. And so the people that were in 2022 that had the opportunity to make money beyond their wildest dreams, but instead they just decided to work 50% because they had no, no vision. Because they could. Yeah. Because it, yeah, you're exactly right. Because it was possible <laughs> to phone it in and work 50% of the time and brag about how you're, oh man, I'm getting $5 a mile and $6 a mile. Well, yeah, hell yeah. It was fun. We enjoyed, I, I told this story, I think in a TikTok, um, uh, had, I, I got a call from Landstar about a trailer that was damaged in 2022. So I go back through all the data and I find it. And when I find it in the spreadsheet, you know, kind of an afterthought, I just happened to look over there and I went in 2022, this dude had somebody back into and destroy his trailer, damaged his trailer bad enough that he had to drop it. Bob tail to West Virginia to get another trailer and then deadhead to North Carolina to pick up the next load lost a load for the weekend and still did $11,000 in revenue would have done almost 15,000. If dude hadn't backed into his trailer, I'm not going to act like that shit wasn't fun. Okay. It was fun doing $10,000 weeks when we didn't even try that hard. And now we're working like animals for 7,000. It takes every moment of your attention. Can I can I address that for a second? Please go ahead. But here's the beauty. Th here's the beautiful thing about that: the effort that we put out to make seven thousand when the uh, the market gets a little bit more back to normal. Uh, look at the work ethic that you have now that you that you've perfected. So that you're not in a position like you like you were before, where you didn't take advantage of that that good time. You know, you let it get past you. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the things that we teach here. You know, the um, the um, the work habits to make you money. Uh, if we can make money in this environment, which we do, um, just think how much money you'll make when the rates. You know, and I, I put an article out today this week in in um, our uh, fleet message center about uh, the, the freight ways prediction that we're at the bottom and, and that, um, you know, things should start turning around a little bit. Um, you know, I bought my truck in 2008, the great, re what was it called? It wasn't the recession. It was called the great. Um, oh, I know what you're talking about and I can't think of it. I just saw it in my, I just saw it in my Facebook memories. Like yesterday. Yeah. Great awakening. No, no, it wasn't. That it was, it was a great, I, anyway, I bought my truck in, June of 2009. Okay. Uh, probably the worst time at that point in time you could ever buy a truck. I didn't, so I learned this business in a bad time, but when times got better, I made a whole a hell of a lot of money and, 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 uh, had some good work, um, you know, work practices, you know, best practices that I learned when times were tough. So I think that's part of the reason that we were so successful when the thing was so good is because I learned at the worst possible time, that's kind of an advantage right now is learning how to do this business when it's hard because it becomes very, very profitable when it's easy. And um, let me get back to the recruiting thing for a minute. You know, we, we do not want you to come here to switch jobs. Uh, we, we do not have a job here. Uh, you know, Chris and I both have said many, many times, if we had to hire drivers and haul freight, neither one of us would be doing this. We'd be doing something else. Um, Absolutely not. And so that's not what we do here. We teach you how to be in business. So the perfect candidate for this is not someone who wants to change jobs, 
with someone whose decision is, do I want to become a business owner as opposed to an employee? And if you're and, and so think about this, if you can, if you could come here and do that with no financial risk to yourself and work alongside people that have done it for a number of years and know how to do it and will share with you, that's the reason to come here. That's the advantage you get to come here. It's not because you're going to quit a shitty job and come try to find a good job. Uh, that's not what we offer here. You know, um, it, it's, it's the, it's the opportunity to learn how to open, start, maintain, and make a profitable business. Uh, and, and again, guess what you get besides it costing you, it, you actually make money while you're here. So, I mean, look at it from that standpoint, we're not interested in, in you improving your job. Uh, you won't like it here. Chris is an asshole to work for and, um, you'll hate him and you'll quit, uh, cause you won't be the first one. Okay. And I'll sleep like a baby knowing and he's hate not, me. he's not lying. Okay. So I've, listen, I've, I've heard him snore. All right. <laughs> so, uh, but if you do want, if you want to learn how to be in business, this is for you. Okay. Uh, but if you want to just get a better job, uh, don't waste your time. Okay. You're, 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 you're not going to last here more than a few days because we work here, you know? Um, and we're not, we don't, we, we don't make this a job on purpose. We don't have entitlements. We don't have benefits. We, our benefit here is we teach you how not to be 75 with no retirement. Okay. That's what we do here. Um, <clears throat> But that's, but if you, if you want to be in business and have all the, the, um, the privileges that come with it, uh, we can teach you how to do that. Uh, but if you just want to find yourself a good job and you need somebody to quote, take care of you, please don't waste your time coming here. And think about, think about how it's even gotten better now when Richie came in what? <clears throat> 20 may june of 2020 spring like of, spring of 2020 yeah no it was october wasn't it? it was on november okay it was fall yeah that's right when richie came here <clears throat> we had an opportunity for you to get in a truck and we'll show you how we do things okay y'all now we got the shop okay i spent the last week um with a couple of drivers in the house we took a transmission apart. I mean, you, we literally disassembled a transmission and put it back together twice because we did it wrong the first time. Um, but where else? Where else are you going to get to come and watch brakes be put on in, in a way that we're going, okay, well, the, you know, listen, this is the brake shoe and these are the springs and these are the S cams. And this is how this works. Like, and then you can literally do it. Like you can literally take the shoes off and put the shoes on and hook up the springs and set the drum on. And you can run the big the Ugga Dugga machine and you can put the lug nuts on and take them off. And we can do shocks and airbags. Where else are you going to get? that kind of experience i mean it was good before because you would you would get to see how we solved problems richie's first load <laughs> he, <laughs> he learned he learned how to put uh he learned how to put placards on a trailer he learned how to get packers when the shipper didn't have any <laughs> richie's first load was a load of empty totes and it had like 32 placards, right? Eight on each side of the trailer. And they didn't have one that, I guess, right? They, there was one that was missing. So he broke, <laughs> he broke into the building. <laughs> and then... We're not, we're not condoning that, by the way. And then, it's even better. I realized, oh my gosh, this is bulk hazmat. You can't run the turnpike. Mm. You know? And so I'm I'm on my phone. I got my app up, and I'm like, hey, we'll just turn left here and right here. And, and I hear silence. And I say, Richie, do you know how to read a map? Oh, no, we weren't allowed to have maps at Covenant. Are you 
Don't fucking use, serious? Don't use names. Well, I don't like going. To, I don't want to be in jail. Okay, they deserve it. Also, don't want to have to hire a lawyer. <clears throat> oh, we weren't allowed to use maps. You talk about an awakening for me. That was in 2020. Of all the other things that got awakened to in 2020, truck drivers are not allowed to have maps. But anyway, at that time, it was we'll show you how we get loads. We'll show you how we solve problems. We'll show you how we do accounting. We'll show you every everything that we have to show you. And now I can literally bring you in the shop. Well, she yank a transmission. Somebody asked if we would be able to do kingpins. And yes, absolutely. We can do kingpins and bushings. And uh, I told Chris Dolan. Today, I'm like, hey, listen, I hate to talk about money at a time like this. We're going to need that tiger tool uh, for yanking those bushings out. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, where else can you get an experience where a 50, again, a 50 year businessman, a 27 year truck driver, a more than decade uh, heavy haul expert, a blue ribbon program graduate and a, a a multiple truck owner. That's your coaching team. That's the people mm -hmm. that you have to pull from when you encounter a problem and you go, okay, well, what do I do now? Okay. Well, let's just, let's just ask one of the five people in this coaching and management team who have proven, especially, I mean, you know, since Larry's difficulties in January, we took over this company and nobody even knew that there was a problem because Larry built an unbelievable team here that was able to step up when our, you know, our guru got pulled out and we're like, holy shit. Cause listen, there was a meeting, right? And we're like, holy shit. What are we going to do now? So we were able to lean on everything that you get to experience if you become if you go through the Blue Ribbon process so that when you're a BCO and you've got your own truck and some crazy nonsense happens to you, you can go, okay, well, I got this. It's not a big deal. And what you don't end up being is one of these fools on Facebook that where they get to end up in my special file on my phone of stupid Landstar posts, you know, uh, I mean, I might have to buy more iCloud storage to keep up with all these nonsense from these morons. Antonia Young says, yeah, I was going to ask you about that one. I put in a request for a half consult on your site. Could you tell me about how long before? Well, Antonia. Shouldn't gonna, he, shouldn't he have, have been linked to the calendar? Uh, well, you would think. We can fix that, Antonio. Apologize for and that. I think it's Antonia. Antonia, okay, sorry. Um. Well, i tell you what. Why don't you send me a straight email at chris at blueribbonlogistics.com? Oh, she. That's even better. Because sometimes those submissions get chewed up by the email server. So just send me a straight email, chris at blueribbonlogistics.com, um, and we'll get that set up for you. Absolutely. Thank you for... Um... Oh, by the way, Rocky, I meant, I meant to mention this. Did you see... The viral content that one Rocky Rockefeller was involved in this week on TikTok. I, I saw him being interviewed by somebody about what his opinion of was wrong listen, with the truck business. Listen, you talk about single celled organisms in the comment section. <laughs> it was gold. Because listen, all Rocky did was tell the truth. Was tell the truth. Yeah. And, and that's, the that's comment section nowadays. was absolute gold yeah I bet well they, i bet they thought they turned on him right oh yeah yeah they they 
well, uh, he he obviously don't know <laughs> dot dot dot. Right. And I'm like, y'all, y'all, he's forgotten most of more than what most of you knuckleheads can ever hope to learn. Let me let me point out something else about the program that that you touched on that I'll, I that's kind of a source point point with me. Also, when you come here, don't come here expecting us to give you a textbook and and give you knowledge. We're going to give you the opportunity to be curious and pull as much stuff from us as you possibly can. But you have to put the effort out. You have to want to get under the truck and and see what Chris is doing. You have to want to get next to me and see what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. You have the opportunity to work alongside experts in all these fields. And uh, and we are here to share with you, but you have to you have to meet us halfway. You have to come and request, hey, how do I know more? How can I find out more about this? Can I come watch you do this? Yeah, um, that's what this program does for you. Okay, we don't have a classroom and and we just give you this bunch of stuff to take home and memorize. We give you an experience. One of our best students right now, by the way, is a female who just joined the platform division and is, mm -hmm. and is uh, showing those guys up over there. But she described it best that, you know, people don't come here for the knowledge. They come here for the experience right. of seeing how, th how things are done and how we react to situations and how we problem solve. That's what we do here. So I just, I'm just trying to make sure you understand what we do here because we have, we've had a lot of people who have been, um, they didn't really understand what this was about. We, even though we say all the time we don't hire truck drivers, we've had a slew recently of people coming here wanting to get a truck driving job, and uh, you know we don't we dislike truck drivers, and it has nothing, <laughs> nothing to do with your occupation, it has to do with your mentality. Okay, right. Uh, but if if you're a truck driver, you'll last here maybe a few hours if you're lucky and really really good at concealing your truck driver bullshit, maybe a week or two. But we'll sniff, we usually sniff it out in the interview. So you usually never get here, but yeah, evidently we let a couple of them slip in over here. But, um, you know, we're a little bit arrogant and cocky, but it's because we've, we've proven that we know what we're doing. And, uh, we understand that, um, you know, I mean, we're, we're wanting to share with you everything that we can. And sometimes that confidence is, is misinterpreted as, as cockiness. Uh, but it's, it's just that we're just very confident in our ability because we have, we are not teaching you something that we haven't done. We've done everything that we're teaching you to do. Um, we've done it over and over and over again. And that's what's so, so good about this program. Yeah, it's it, it. Seth and I were having this conversation. Seth Cobra was our first graduate and he was in town this week. And, you know, we got we had the 24 year old Evan in town bless his heart and, and i'm 48 seth's 43 i think and we're going gosh to be 24 again you know um to but have, the evan's question, to have evan's hair again yeah but <laughs> the question was would i have listened if i would have had the Larry Long experience at 24. Would I have listened? Would I have recognized? Would I have seen the opportunity? That was kind of Larry's catchphrase from back in the day. See the opportunity. I don't know. I mean, I know what I was at 24 then, and I was an idiot. Um, but the the question of do you recognize what's available to you right now? Um, this is the best and worst time to do the Blue Ribbon program because the market sucks. So it's the worst time. But it's the best time because you get to see how we survive in a down market. The links that we will go to, um, the, the, you know, I, I'm I'm 24 seven, 365, um, as a fleet manager, mechanic, um, maintenance coordinator, and all this stuff. But I had this realization the other day that when I came to Larry in March of 2018, 
I was basically a really good truck driver. I, I could, I could drive a truck really well and I was a great trip planner and I was a great load booker. Right. But look at where I am today, a competent mechanic. I can hang with these guys in the shop. There's some things that they can do better than I can faster than I can because they have a little more experience than I do, but I have allowed myself to experience things that I would not have otherwise experienced and try things I otherwise would not have tried. And so here I am today, someone that not only can drive a truck, but I can manage a fleet and I can work on a truck and I can change turbos and, and all that kind of stuff. But it was a willingness that I had. And that's sometimes what's missing is the willingness to go, okay, I, I can't have a completely emotional reaction to this thing that I'm experiencing today because we rarely let emotion get involved in it. It's very black and white. It's profitable and we do it. It's not profitable and we don't do it. Um, you know, so <clears throat> you have to be willing to allow yourself to be coached and to be held accountable because that's, that's another part that people struggle with is sometimes I got to say, Hey, um, look at that situation and that circumstance you're in right now, let's roll back a couple of days and let's see the decision that led to that. And a lot of people can't handle that. They can't, they can't accept responsibility for the really stupid decision that they made. And sometimes it's a, a mistake. Oh, well, I didn't get paid today. Right. Cause you didn't scan your paperwork. Was that a fatal thing? No, it's not fatal, but um, you sure wish that Larry Long wouldn't have given you an ass chewing that you just got because see when you don't scan the, when you don't scan the paperwork, guess who else don't get paid? Larry Long. And when Larry Long don't get paid, Larry Long gets very angry. It could get fatal. Yeah, it can get. <laughs> so <laughs> um, you have to think so much more than yourself, right? You have to think about if you don't scan the paperwork, the agent doesn't get paid either. Well, screw the agents. They're a bunch of crooks. Okay. All right. Cupcake. Um, uh, you know, you, you have to completely abandon the idea when, if you want to get in business now, look, I, I could go to any trucking company as a truck driver and make a hundred grand a year. No problem. Okay. I've got 27 years in this industry. Not a problem. Um, but if you're going to be in business, okay. If you're going to, I talked to a, a longhorn steakhouse guy that a uh, uh, couple of weeks ago up there eating dinner and we were talking with the owner or not the owner. He's the manager. franchise manager, he, franchise manager. And he said, this location, South Charleston, West Virginia, has the highest guest count of any Longhorn in the United States. Now, other locations beat him on profit because they're in California and they have higher prices. But he has the highest guest count in the United States. And he's talking about how, well, you know, listen, I got to get these, uh, I got to get these, these seats recovered. And, you know, we had, we had big storms come through. Um, there was like 17 tornadoes, the cams at the old location, the trailer got blown off of the foundation. I mean, it was, it got wild here. Well, guess where the general manager of the Longhorn was on the roof. I'm trying to think of what he did. Probably tarping it so it wouldn't be wet no, inside. No, he <laughs> you'll love this. So the fans, the power outage doesn't cause a pro lot of problems, but when you turn the power on instantly, 
things get blown up, right? Mm -hmm. Dude so, goes to Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever and buys box fans and sets them on the roof to suck the the smoke and stuff so that they can open the restaurant, mm. right? Do you think he asked permission to do that? Do, do you think he had – what was his motivation? Highest guest count in the nation. That's not by accident because there's another one of those franchises down in Barbersville, and it's not anywhere near the dining experience that you get in South Charleston. Why is that? Because there's a guy that cares about the business. Mm -hmm. There's a guy – that cares about the customer. He knows and understands the thing that we come to understand is that is if you will put the customer first, everything is going to work out well for you. But when you put yourself first, your experience in business is going to be very, very, very troubling. In short, in short, <laughs> well, mm -hmm. the, uh, the roof, the roof, not the roof, the roof. That's West I've Virginia. Got, That's I've West got Virginia. Something. I was looking for something in my pocket here. Ask, it, ask him. Found, oh, here it is. <clears throat> ask him what uh, what color the roof was. <clears throat> I've spent a listen. I'm going to tell you what. I've spent a disturbing amount of time thinking about this, this, the word color. You said it right. I did. I did. Thank because you. every time now, because of you bastards, that I hear somebody say the word color. Now you're, now you're almost going back to the. Well, old see, one. I think about that a lot. And I, <laughs> and I go, uh, I'm just a government school graduate from Putnam County. C O L O R. There is not a U. Anywhere in that word, it's C O L O R. Well, just think of it this way: it's C O L L A R and C O L O R are not pronounced the same way. And neither one of the bitches has a U in it, right? Well, I can't help that. That's the English. But anyway, collar and color are not the same thing. Well, <clears throat> listen, that's some kind of West Virginia Virginia ease. I guess so. I guess you know so. what scares the shit out of me. Hmm. I, I'm coming up here to live for a month. I can't imagine what it's going to do to me while I'm up here. Uh, listen, I, I'm going to tell y'all what the the opportunities for for everybody for for the generalized humanity when Blue Ribbon opens a shop on June 10th um, are innumerable. The opportunities for y'all to come and see Larry Long live for a month in West Virginia is probably going to be better. And listen, we have absolutely scared the shit out of the guys at Cam Shop. I hope I can drink by then. <laughs> We're like, <laughs> poor Herbie. We're like, listen, listen, Larry Long is on his way. Y'all, y'all better understand what's fixing to happen. And Herbie's terrified. Herbie, Herbie's like, what's he going to do when he gets here? I'm like, oh, Herbie, <laughs> he's going to get a hold of you. Good. He's going to make your life a living hell. <laughs> Good. Oh, yeah. It's going to be beautiful. I can't wait. Um, okay. Let me roll through the comments real quick one more time um, just to make sure I didn't miss hey, how, anything. How are you reading the comments in front of the Blue Ribbon leg 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 the logo? I've the one been drinking. You haven't. Where I can't read a damn word of that. I can read the one. The oh, one you're talking joined. about on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a little, it's a little different. I can't read a I single can, one of those. Let me tell you what I can do for you. Okay, I'm gonna turn that logo off. Beautiful, thank you. <clears throat> what are these little pink things that keep showing up on TikTok? These oh, little, it's that silly diamond gift nonsense. Do we get anything of that? No, absolutely not. Then to turn it off, I can't. They don't give me that opportunity. Yeah. Is Carl okay? Antonia Young is Carl working at your new shop? No, obviously he he just had a double lung transplant, so he's ninety more days living in um, Cleveland, Ohio. But we do plan on having 
um, Carl, we want Carl involved in some way, whatever his, uh, his, his limitations are or are not. Um, Rocky's asking about the straight truck, the straight truck worked out because we finally, we finally, what the hell is the straight truck? Well, we had a truck at the shop that had a vibration. And we so didn't. We didn't have a shop. We didn't. Cam there, 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 there was a there was a truck at the shop. <clears throat> okay. And so, of course, I pulled my phone out and I called the hotline, <laughs> the Florida North Florida hotline. I called the North Florida hotline, and I said, "Here's here's what we need to do because I called Rocky." Um, and so there were decisions made, and the decisions were the exact opposite of what of what Rocky said to do. Um, and it didn't work. And so, eventually, decisions were made to do what Rocky said to do in the first damn place. And by some miracle, that actually fixed the truck. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm like, y'all realize I can call, like, a guy that knows it all. You know, if it's, if it's suspension and alignment, he knows it. Um. Okay, hummingbird. Can you touch on a topic? What does the what does the EGT says about how the engine is running? Exhaust gas temperature. I'm assuming is EGT. Uh, brother. I mean, there's so many variables to that. I would call Pittsburgh power. I would call Pittsburgh power. Because it, it gets depending on the engine. I mean, with 350, 350 is nothing no. for EGTs. No, I, mean, I mean, EGTs can run into the 12 to 1500s. Yeah, yeah. Um, speaking, oh, of, speaking of Pittsburgh Power, we might want to talk about our sponsor. Let's do that real quick. Uh, because they have a new product, and it is called Flashpoint. Mm -hmm. um, I should have some information about this up in front of me, but basically what flashpoint is, is a, a performance improver. It's a cetane booster, uh, helps emulsify water. We're going to do a test, uh, run with it in Richie's truck. Um, we use a product now called FPPF fuel power. Um, and we have used that. How long have you used that for seven, long, eight years? Long time. Um, <clears throat> it, it happened on it because of algae and asphaltine. Now we don't have a lot of scientific data here, but we can tell you that since we started using FPPF, we don't have asphaltine and we don't have algae take with that and do with it with what you will. What we're going to look at is will the, Oh, well, thank you, sir. For my production here for ultimate performance and emission system protection, Used with max mileage for fuel burn catalyst. What in what benefits does Flashpoint provide to the engine? Increases cetane. Cetane is found naturally in fuel and is measured by a cetane number. Current fuel quality standards in the United States is set a minimum of 40. Europe has 51. Most UF, U.S. fuels have cetane numbers between 40 and 45. Diesel engines run best with cetane between 47 and 52. Flashpoint raises the CT number by up to seven points, bringing the fuel to optimum levels needed for the engine to perform best. Disperses water, which that's what we've done for so long with FPPF. Diesel fuel attracts and holds water. This can lead to corrosion, increased wear of fuel systems, loss of lubricity, ice crystals in cold weather, and microbial slime growth, algae. Flashpoint emulsifies water so that it passes through harmlessly as vaporizes released as steam. The result is the water in the fuel is dispersed uniformly throughout the fuel in micro or nanoscale particles, particles bonded to the fuel. Um, inhibits corrosion, uh, improves fuel economy and power, increases lubricity. Um, it is a it is a catalyst, not a, or my, I'm sorry, max mileage is a catalyst, not an additive. Uh, so flashpoint is an additive. The catalyst is a, a max mileage is a catalyst. So we're going to do some testing with it. I've got, uh, by the way, they sent it to my house. I walked in the front door when I got home and there it was in, 
you know. Um, so we have some. Good. Um, so uh, I'm going to keep a small stock for now um, at the shop. Obviously, as we get to the grand opening, I'll probably keep a little more on hand. Uh, but we're going to check it out because we're spending. I ran the numbers on FPPF versus um, Flashpoint at the highest dosage, and it was pretty much a complete wash. So we're going to give it. A, we're going to give it a try. Obviously, we trust T Pittsburgh Power because we've had a relationship with them for so many years. Uh, but that doesn't mean we're not going to test it. We're going to test it and see how it does. And, uh, you know, if it works with Richie, I mean, hell, it'd have to work for you, right? Um, By the way, we're going to be a Pittsburgh Power Partner shop when we open. Uh, we'll be the remote tune, but also our relationship with them is that they'll be assisting us with diagnostics and with uh, repair advice and whatnot, too. So uh, we'll have a close relationship with Pittsburgh Power. We'll stock a lot of their parts and, um, and of course all of our fuel mileage modifications originate from Pittsburgh power. Um, so we'll have all that stuff on hand as well. <clears throat> you guys need to call Pittsburgh power and let them know that you heard about them on our podcast. Okay. And that you look forward to coming to West Virginia and being able to have access to their products and their service and whatnot. Um, it helps us out a lot to keep a sponsor. So I wish y'all could see me over here trying to read Richie's lips. I can't understand what he's saying. Reading his lips is. I'm looking right at him. His lips aren't moving. Well, Richie said, don't forget they're the sponsor. Well, they are the sponsor of the blue ribbon podcast and have been for a couple of years now. That's why. Larry said, let's talk about our sponsor. And we started talking about Pittsburgh power. I don't know if you were paying attention to the same show that we're actually doing right now. We also need them to like, and subscribe, by the way, liking and subscribing. If you like what help. you hear here and you want to hear more of it, please like, and subscribe. That makes us, uh, able to market our product to sponsors, uh, much easier. So, um, like and subscribe, like and subscribe. Whereas everybody else says on this on this channel, smash that button. <laughs> smash I'm not sure that what that like means, button. but smash, but smash that it, like okay? Button. Yeah. Um, um and please come out for our grand opening on the June tenth. Um, we're gonna we'll have all kind of specials and uh, we're gonna be cooking and I mean we're gonna have a really good time. We come out and meet everybody, let us see your truck, and we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do a fuel mileage makeover for everybody that comes for free. Uh, so we can give you advice on on uh, doing some modifications that might help you uh, make more money, save money. Um, so, um, you know, we'll look it over and give you a spreadsheet with all the things that we're recommending and what the potential savings that should look like for you. So um, we'll be doing that all all day on the open on the grand opening. Also, I think we're going to have Dar I, she doesn't she hasn't confirmed this, but she promised me at the truck show that she would come down for our grand opening and do, um, explanation of, of the, uh, of the, um, max mileage. So if you guys haven't talked to her about max mileage, it's, it's, it's really, it's really worth you listening to her. She's very, very, very intelligent lady. Dr. Jane loves to talk about the catalyst. Absolutely. She does. Um, Antonia asks, I bought mask. I bought max mileage. Should I wait to do the diesel force cleaning before starting to use it? No, I would start using it immediately because yeah. it's going to give you. It's going to help cut down the soot. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I, I know that, that there are trolls on the internet that loved, oh, snake oil, blah, blah, blah. Well, listen, I can tell you that since we have been running emissions trucks uh which started in 2020 2020 yep no 2019 started in 2019 so it's been five years and we have been using the catalyst we have not had 
emissions related issues like everybody else has had. And even on these D deck five Detroits, when I take, um, there's a, you can take a, it's a, it's a V band clamp, uh, where the crossover connects to the top of the EGR cooler. You can take that off and look down in there. I got into one with a, with a scope mm -hmm. and we do not have the clogged up EGR coolers. We do not have the clogged up DPF uh, filters. We just don't have uh, the information um, to, uh, um, I'm sorry. We don't have the, um, we don't have the problems. It just doesn't happen. It's not just, not just us, but let me tell you something about DPF alternatives. If you use the catalyst, they warranty their cleaning on, on uh, EGR coolers forever, forever. That's how much they believe in that product. Because uh, that's where it's going to show up uh, early on is soot in your, in your emission systems. And they, they warranty their work forever if you run a catalyst. That's, that's a pretty hefty, uh, you know, plug right there. Sorry, I got distracted by some text messages going back and forth about a, about a truck. So, well, y'all, it's been, uh, it's been two hours. Um, <clears throat> and I still have some more plans next door at the bar. So we will be back with you next Friday correct let me look at the calendar make sure oh we might not be next friday we might have to be saturday because i believe i have a family event on friday night so stay tuned and we will update you on whether or not we're going to be friday or saturday of next week um and with that give pittsburgh power a call Tell them you heard about them on, on our podcast. Thank them for being our sponsor. Um, if you have any kind of uh, engine-related diagnostic problems, they are apps. They've got electrical engineers on staff. Uh, they actually can repair ECMs there. Um, so get familiar with what they do. They're an excellent shop located okay, just outside of Pittsburgh in a town called Saxonburg, PA. Um, they have a, um, a lot of diesel performance products, a lot of products we use for fuel mileage improvement. They now own the OPS product, which we are firm believers in the, the, um, the um, oil, 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 I can't think of what it's called, Chris. Bypass oil system. Thank OPS. You OPS. <laughs> oil purification system. Thank you. <clears throat> I was trying to put bypass in there. And um, they're the exclusive distributor of the of the Max Mileage Catalyst, fuel borne Catalyst. So uh, give them a call. Tell them that you heard about us here and that uh, you appreciate them sponsoring our podcast. And um, try some of their products, okay? Absolutely. Well, we thank everyone for joining us. Um, you know, we... Again, remember, we did this podcast by accident. I wanted people to hear Larry tell stories, and it's turned into this thing that it's turned into. Um, so we appreciate everyone listening um, and, and, and being gracious with all of the silly problems that we have and technical difficulties because um, we're running this thing on a shoestring, and I'm the producer. So God help us all. Um, but uh, we will be back with you next week. It might be Friday. It might be Saturday. And um, we will go from there. Until then, everyone, please be safe and be profitable. And we will see you next time.